Today's episode, episode number one, where today we are doing, if you can't recognize what this snotty looking thing is in this jar, it's called kombucha. And you can buy kombucha in the store, in any supermarket. But you know, I've been brewing kombucha myself because I'm trying to get drunk for free. And I'm trying to brew it in a really strong strength. So let me show you this collection all of the collection of kombucha i got it all started out as one kombucha that my friend gave me and then it turned into like look how many kombuchas i got you got like one two three four five six seven kombuchas so look what the kombucha looks like in a jar see what it looks like in a jar so i'm gonna take off all the jars these are all jars. Normally, normally you can uh, brew kombucha with. Normally, it's covered in cheesecloth. The kombucha, and if you don't really know about kombucha, you can just look it up on the internet. You know, K O M B C H A. Normally, you cover it with cheesecloth so that it can breathe. But I've been covering it with um, paper towel because it can breathe in paper towel as well. And kombucha don't like light. I've been reading about it on the internet, and it don't like light. So I'm gonna to try to make this as quick as possible. What I'm about to do is, um, cause I've been drinking them. You see the spigot? I've been drinking them. And, th and this one is pretty low, so I'm gonna add some more green tea. I got green tea bags. You, you brew kombucha with green tea, and these are just, you know, green tea bags. You can lose. You can use loose green tea also. I think some people grew it, brew it up with black tea also. I want to show you what the kombucha looks like. What these things are actually called scobies, and it's the scobies. You know, the scobies that um, make the kombucha brew. It really looks like snot. If you look at it, it looks like snot. I'm gonna try and pull one out. These have been brewing for like. A month, if you look it up on the internet, that can take anywhere from seven days to 30 days to brew. So that's the liquid from that one, but look how thick it is. And technically, if anybody wants some scobies, if you want some scobies, I got scobies for sale. Because look, this one is like thick. It's like 30 layers. So you can Venmo me in the description. Venmo me at Decor For You, and I'll sell you a scoby for like $10. Um, so, I'm basically getting ready to, like, fill him up with some more liquid. But look at this scoby. I'm going to pull him out, too. Look how thick these things are. They're like, they're like bread, pieces of bread. And they say, um, oh, pulling out the liquid. Uh-oh. Scoby mess, scoby mess. They say you're supposed to clean them. Uh-oh. I can't show you too much, but they say you're supposed to clean them after 30 days, throw the old scoby away. But somehow they make like probiotics that's good for your stomach. You really got to look them up on the internet. If anybody knows anything about scobies, look at this one. Can you see what, how thick this one is? This must be like 30 layers. Again, I'm going to repeat to you. If anybody likes to buy a scoby, get one for $10 straight here from Carrie's Kitchen. Cooking with Carrie. So... What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to fill this up because he wants some more liquid, this scoby. Because you see, I just drained them out because I'm going to drink this and try and get drunk. I think the store sells them. For, yeah, I, okay, I'm not going to get drunk, but I'm going to try and get like some microbi some uh, probiotic effect. You know, you can buy this from the supermarket, which is 0 0.05 content at the supermarket. But if you brew this at home in hard cider, I think you can get them to like 4 points alcohol content you know 5.0 alcohol content you got you some hard cider for free so really what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna make some green tea to try to fill these up 
you know, these green tea bags. Or uh, any green tea, or I think even the black tea. So I'm gonna let this come for come to a boil for a second. I'm gonna wait for this water to come to a boil, and then I'm just gonna put the green tea in it. And another ingredient that I forgot to show you is look, I forgot. You can look down in my cabinet. We got some sugar. There's some sugar in here. Sugar. Oh no, wait, that's grits. <laughs> Kombucha needs sugar. I forgot that's a very important ingredient. It don't work without sugar. Okay. And I think it's the sugar that has, it's the sugar that has something to do with making it turn to alcohol and ferment. I think it needs something like three cups of sugar per gallon or something to be correct. Look it up on the internet, okay? Cause this ain't gonna work without no sugar. You're just gonna have a bowl full of mold or something. Yeah, and it's called scobies that you put in the in the kombucha. I think it's spelled S-C-O-B-Y. Those are the snot things that make the kombucha brew and turn into alcohol and everything. You know, so let me just pretend like I'm pouring sugar in here, but because this is cool, not cooled down, I'm not really going to pour no sugar. I'll pour a bit. So I'm just going to pour a bit, but you know, this isn't really done correctly, if I were to be honest, because I didn't get... I didn't get Betty's show cooking, didn't really figure this part out beforehand that she was supposed to make the green tea beforehand. And normally, you know, when I make the green tea, I just pour it over the scalbies to, to add more green tea and sugar in them. You know? So let's just pretend, let's just pretend that this is some green tea. You know? And we're gonna put, we get ready, we get ready to cover this, we get, we get ready to cover this scoby again, you know? We get ready to cover them with some more green tea because that's what they live in is green tea. So there. Scoby got some more green tea. And Scoby should be happy. So let's cover them. We're going to cover the Scoby with our uh, paper towel. Normally they say you can also cover the Scoby with a cheesecloth. This is kind of a new baby Scoby. I, I don't know what those dark spots are, but the dark spots are okay, too. You got to look that up on the internet, you know, to see what they all doing, you know. So, you know, I'm going to cover him. Uh-oh, he wants a big one. You got to cover him up with the rubber band. And, you know, you look it up on the internet. Let's just pretend that he's covered. <laughs> you really got to read about this on the internet, you know, to know how to do it correctly. Let's cover these so, with this one up with rubber band. And I'm using mason jars. You see how I'm using mason jars? If you look on the internet, a lot of people use the mason jars. So that, that's Karen's Scoby cooking with kombucha kitchen episode. But let's take these to a dark place because when you make Scoby, they like hot temperature. The hotter the temperature is around 70 degrees, the happier the scoby will be. He don't like no cold temperature. So let's store him in a warm, dark corner because for some reason they like dark. For some reason this light's gonna kill them. So let's take scoby to their new dark corner. Follow me. Rick. Follow me. This isn't the correct dark corner for Scoby. You gotta pretend like he's in the cabinet. We're just gonna store him here. We're storing Scoby to his cabinet. Pretend this is a cabinet. Because Scoby is like dark places, so pretend this is a dark cabinet. And they have to have air to breathe. I'm telling you, Venmo me a decor for you, D E C O R F O R U. Get your Scoby ten dollars. Doesn't include packaging, handling though, and shipping costs though, because you know, I gotta figure out how to ship Scoby. 
We got two more jars. I started this batch of SCOBY like three months ago. I started this from one SCOBY. And uh, look how many SCOBYs you can make when they multiply and you turn them into jars to have your own SCOBY. So there. Happy SCOBY Kombucha Brewing Day. 